this QBI Institute presentation and training session on Microsoft Visio. Microsoft Visio skills are essential skills for IT business analysts and project project managers and senior IT professionals. Microsoft Visio is registered trademark of Microsoft Corporation. Microsoft Visio is a modeling software. It is a requirements modeling tool and it is a visualization tool. Friends, this is going to be a packed session. What you see here is the index of the session. This complete index will be covered in two lectures. So we will start with section one which is overview of Microsoft Visio. Section two is Microsoft Visio shapes. It is the Visio shapes that make up the Visio diagram. And the power of Microsoft Visio lies embedded in the power which Microsoft has given to its shapes. Then in section three, we will move on to Microsoft Visio connectors and connection points. We will learn on how to organize and how to work with the Microsoft Visio page. That is the section four. Section five allows us to utilize Microsoft Visio artifacts and requirement documents. So you see, you can prepare a UML diagram. You can prepare a BPMN model in your Visio file. Then you can interlink this Visio file with your business, with your functional requirement document. Section six is all about the guideline on preparing UML diagrams. Section seven talks about website map and wireframe diagrams. Visio has got a good and a rich functionality on wireframing. Then section eight talks about Visio automation. We will cover Visio case studies in section nine and section 10 covers the summary of the lecture. So there is a lot to cover. Let's get started right away. So we start with section one that is overview of Microsoft Visio. What is the importance of Microsoft Visio for? What is the importance of Microsoft Visio for the business analyst. This is what we need to learn here. Friends, you see the business analyst is in the business of communication. The business of business analyst is to communicate. Communicate with all the stakeholders of our project. We need both left brain and right brain capabilities to communicate. You see left brain is all about the logic. It is all about language. It is all about, you see, reasoning. Right brain capabilities are intuition, creativity, art, music. You see, as professionals, not each of us are equally gifted in left brain and right brain outputs. Engineers, technical people have good reasoning ability that this is how they have been trained. Sometimes they lack in the right brain or creative outputs or preparing visuals or preparing sketches or preparing wireframes. Friends, you see, for a business analyst, if he is to communicate, this is a very important skill. So Visio adds significantly to your right brain outputs. What Visio can do for you? As a business analyst, as a project manager, as a scrum master or as a product owner, on a development project, Visio provide, can provide you diagramming capabilities. And it is not only for you as an IT professional that Visio has got a certain set of diagrams. Visio provides diagramming capabilities to business, engineering, software, database, and architecture professionals. And it has diagrams in categ these categories and these diagrams are organized in the form of templates 
you can start working with these templates and prepare a good diagram. As a business analyst, you can prepare UML diagrams, activity diagram, use case diagram, state machine diagram, etc. You can prepare BPM and models, maps and diagrams. You can prepare flow charts. You can capture brainstorming discussions while you are facilitating a brainstorming session with your stakeholders. With Visio, you are tempted to call yourself a technology artist. So this is what Visio is all about. Let's proceed. One question is asked by many of my senior business analyst friends and senior friends in IT industry is Visio learning compulsory. Many of them have survived and also thrived in IT industry without learning a modeling tool. So friends, let me tell you, if you are new to IT industry, it is good and great time to start learning modeling right away. If you are old to IT industry and if you have been as part of some old team where when you joined requirements, knowledge of requirements modeling was not compulsory, it is never too late because if you are to learn with you, you can prepare diagrams like this. On the left, that rich diagram is what we call as the UML activity model. On the right, the diagram with the white background is what we can identify as a UML BPM, and not a UML, but a business process model and notation diagram. So, you are the master of the process. You know what your the processes of your stakeholders are. With Visio, you can easily capture them in visuals and share these visuals with all other stakeholders. Now, it is time to get to start Microsoft Visio. So to start Microsoft Visio, all what you need to do is basically click on the start button on the bottom left of your computer screen, that is the Windows start button. So I click it here. I can see Visio 2013 icon available here. If this icon is not to be seen, you can just write Visio here in search program and files and then Microsoft will find Visio for it wherever it is installed on your machine. So I am just doing that search. So you can see this icon for Visio 2013 has come up. And all what you need to do is basically click it. So Visio is opening up. And Visio has got 2013 edition. And Visio has also got 2010 edition. So many of our modelers may still be working on with your 2010 edition. However, Microsoft is ready with the 2016 version of Visio, which will come up in the either in the last month of 2015 or in January of 2016. Visio has organized its start page into these two areas. The featured one, which is here. So the featured category shows you the diagrams which you would have opened earlier. So you, I would have used the UML use case diagram earlier, so it is shown here. And then there are categories. So in the categories area, the Visio diagrams are classified into business, engineering, flowchart, general, maps, floor and plans, network, schedule, software and database. And then you can prepare new from existing. And in each of these categories, various templates are available. So say for example, in software and database, we have templates like 10 database notation, com and OLE, conceptual website, Crowfoot's database notation, data flow diagram, data flow model diagram, enterprise application, IDFlex database notation, program 
structure is UML activity. And you can see UML class, UML database notation, UML sequence, UML state machine, UML use case, then website map and wireframe diagrams. So rich templates, definitely you cannot master all the templates, but you need to master templates which are, you see, applicable to your role and applicable to your profession. So this is how you start Visio. For those who are using Visio 2010, the Visio 2010 start page is divided into three areas. The area on A is the navigation area. The area on B is the template area where you can see the recently used templates. And below that there are template categories, the same as business engineering general map floor and plans etc and the third area is the template preview area so whichever template you will choose here in the template area the preview of that template will be shown in the template preview area so now when we have started with you let's move further so you see if you start with you and if you start to prepare a Visio model or a Visio diagram, a Visio page will open up. So let's start a Visio page in Visio. So say, let us say I chose UML use case. So I created it. So this is what you see is a Visio page. You will be preparing your drawing on this Visio page. So let us learn a little more about the Visio page. So I take you back to the presentation. A typical Visio page looks something like this. So we start with the icon A, where you can see, so it is the bottom left type of the page A. It is known as the page control. Through the page control area, you can add new pages. You can add background and foreground pages. You can reorder pages. You can change the layout of the page, say for example, from A4 size to A3 size. You can you see, change the page unit, whether it is in American units or whether it is in the SI system. Then, area on what is marked as B is called as the Visio stencil. A stencil is nothing else but a collection of Visio shapes. Visio stencil on a Visio page will be relevant to the Visio template or the Visio diagram which you wish to prepare. So say for example, on this Visio page, the Visio stencil which is shown on the left has, you see, shapes like actor, use case, subsystem, association, dependency, generalization, extend and include. So these shapes in the UML use case stencil are the relevant ones for the use case diagram. You can find even more shapes for the stencil through this more shapes area. So you need to click here and you can find more shapes. So this is the Visio stencil. Then what you see here marked as C is the file menu. So let's get to Visio and see what file menu is all about. So this is the file menu. Just coming up. So I click on the file menu. And this area, what you see on the screen on Microsoft Visio is what is called as the backstage view. So when you click on the file menu, backstage view comes up. The file tab 
is the only menu available in the Visio system. Then there are other tabs like Home, Insert, Design, Data, Process, Review, View, Developer, etc. So don't focus on this tab. I, I have created this tab only just to highlight that in Visio you can create your own custom tabs also. So this is the tab which I created in my own name. So this is the, these are the tabs and what you saw here was the file menu. Then over the file menu is what we call as the quick access toolbar marked as D. So let's have a look at the quick access toolbar. So here my quick access toolbar on this video page is shown below the ribbon. So I can customize the quick access toolbar. I can add new icons here. So say for example I am adding a quick paint icon so which has come up here. I can move my quick access toolbar from below the ribbon to above the ribbon. So I click it and I put it above the ribbon. And this is what you call as the quick access toolbar. Then what is marked E is the groups on the ribbon. So every group, home, insert, design, data, review, view, developer, etc. has got ribbon. This is called as the ribbon bar. Microsoft Office system introduced the ribbon interface in Office 2007 applications. In Visio, this ribbon bar was introduced only with Visio 2010. And this ribbon bar has got various functions or tools which are relevant to that ribbon. Let's have a look at the ribbon bar in the Visio page itself. So you see on the home ribbon bar, we have clipboard, so tools related to clipboard, font, paragraph, tools, shape styles, arrange and editing. So this is the ribbon bar. So if I click on insert, insert ribbon bar will be shown. If I click on design, design ribbon bar will be shown. And from the design ribbon bar, you can change the design of the Visio page. So say I can put a background here. So I put a background, if I put a background here, that background will become part of my Visio page. So, so the background of the Visio page will look like this. So this was the ribbon bar. And what you see in the ribbon bar are various groups. So common, commonly utilized tools are arranged as groups. So you need to remember what are the groups there in a particular tab. So in the design tab, there are groups like page setup, themes, variants, backgrounds, layout. So if you are, are proficient in remembering these groups, you will immediately come to the relevant tab and come to the relevant group and utilize that functionality without losing any time. And that is the difference between a professional and someone who is just starting. So be attentive. As I have told you these things of what constitutes a Visio page, be attentive, be observant, and then see that you remember these things and your mind and your hands through which you prepare your Visio diagram is in sync with what you do and you do it quickly. So coming back to the Visio presentation, then this area E is the main Visio page or the Visio drawing page. It is here. So on our Visio drawing page, you can see that we have put up a background of the world map. You can put your own custom background. You can put your watermark. You can use the custom color theme of your company. So that is how you organize a Visio page. And diagrams on a Visio page can be drawn to scale. 
you you wish you can draw it to scale as well then in the bottom right is basically the zoom control so you can see the zoom control here so zoom control allows you to pan and zoom your page number one it allows you to switch windows this is what we call as the zoom control you can move to the presentation mode if you wish so I have changed my drawing to the presentation mode I can escape and friends preparing a visio diagram is basically utilizing these shapes and what you do you drag select drag and drop these shapes on the visio page and then you prepare the diagram just like this so this is all about the visio page so what I will do I will stop here for a minute and I will see if there are any questions in the audience we can we, I will address that and then I will move forward so so I will unmute you and I will ask you for questions if any yeah Mr. Rishikesh you have been very attentive during the session and uh, I know that Vizio is new for you because you are from a different industry. You have recently joined IT industry as a senior business analyst. Earlier you were there in airlines industry as a senior professional. So if you have any questions right now on Microsoft Vizio, please let me know. Yeah, I just wanted to know, uh, we are using this Vizio. Uh, can we uh, do our... Uh, 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 flow chart or something and then copy it into the PowerPoint or then we have to present it in the Visio only? Uh, you, you have got a good question that you, if you prepare a good diagram in Visio, how you can utilize this diagram other across other softwares in the Microsoft Office system or uh, even across other softwares in the yeah. other software. So it is yeah, a it is a good question. I will general, yeah. yeah. Generally, we do the uh, we try to do the presentations or use cases studies or something where we generally run through them in the PowerPoint. Yeah. So, is it uh, that's what I wanted to ask? Yeah, I will I will just show that to you. Just a minute. So you see, you can pre prepare highly rich and interactive drawings in Visio, and those drawings can be shared through other softwares in the Microsoft Office system and in other areas also. So I'll just very quickly give you one pointer. So say for example, let's say you are preparing this UML model and so I am just making it a little more meaningful. So if you are preparing this UML model in Visio, There are few things through which you can share this diagram. One thing is you can just take the snip of this diagram through the snipping tool which Windows has provided it to us and then you can copy and paste. So this is one method. There are other methods also. Other methods include include basically linking this with your drawing with your Microsoft PowerPoint presentation or this Microsoft uses the technology object linking and embedding so, so you can just do a copy and paste in your PowerPoint document so in your PowerPoint document you can let's say put a new slide 
and on the new slide you just need to paste this thing however in this method you need to ensure that when you are updating your drawing in the microsoft visio file you need to copy and paste it again if you link this drawing with the office system file then it won't happen now you see on the visio page do you have any other question before i proceed no that was the question okay so friends now it is time to move ahead on the visio page at the top right and on the bottom left there are certain options let us focus on those top right and bottom left options on the visio page so this particular thing is to minimize the visio file this is to restore down this is to close the file this one is to minimize the ribbon so you can minimize your ribbon it is same it is also the same in your office system across say in powerpoint also so you can see here i have minimized the ribbon so now the ribbon is not to be seen to minimize the window this one and a small cross to close the window so you can see it in the video file here this is to minimize the ribbon this is to minimize close the window so it is asking me whether i would like to save this drawing or not so i just do a cancel here this is to minimize the whole visio instance so these were the options on the bottom right on the bottom left there are certain options which are available we need to see them let's have a look at them so on the bottom left you can see the page number which is page 1 of 1 which is the page number of the visio drawing english us is written here so basically the unit being used english us or metric and then the macro recording option so you can see here so you can see the page number the english united states units metric system we are using and recording a macro so here you can record a macro in visio so those who are aware of macros in microsoft office system will can easily remember and understand what a macro is so macro is basically a small computer program which can which is includes a series of steps in your office system software and which can be recorded so even a non programmer can create a macro and a non programmer can basically automate certain tasks so when we will learn automation in visio we will learn how to record a macro and how to rerun a macro and we will also learn how to edit some simple macros because whenever you record a macro some computer code is written in the background so but macro is not the topic for now let's stay focused and let's get ahead so file menu we have already learned file is the only drop down menu available and options which you can see here for file is this one info new open save save as print share export close account options etc and what you see here on the screen in visio is what they call as the back stage view so this is the file menu and friends i will also point out to point you out a small thing which you must know and which you must remember that if you were to identify which edition of visio you are working upon you can on the center top next to the 
your drawing name what you can read here is Visio Professional. Visio comes in three editions. Visio Standard, Visio Professional and Visio for Office 365 edition. Visio Standard is the standard edition for the individual user. The main difference between Visio Professional Edition and Visio International Standard Edition is basically the fact that Visio Professional Edition provides lot of team collaboration features and facilities including the publish to the SharePoint and, and good integration with the SharePoint software. So just remember for now, Visio has got three editions, Visio standard with your professional and then there is yet another edition which comes with your office 365 edition so that is a standard ed separate edition in Visio. then we have learned about the ribbon bars and the groups on the ribbon so what you see here is the home ribbon and on the home ribbon there are groups like clipboard, font, paragraph, tools, shape, arrange and editing. So as I have told you the Microsoft Office system introduced a user interface element that is called as the ribbon and that was introduced with to Office 2007. This ribbon type interface was incorporated in Microsoft Visio in the 2010 version. Then we talk about the home tab or the home ribbon. Home tab or home ribbon has provision for common actions like alignment, font size, formatting, copy, paste, etc. So you can see here the home tab or the home ribbon. What you see here, I will just put the background and come back to the home ribbon. So home ribbon, here you can utilize these tools. So on your diagram, you can utilize the home ribbon and you can prepare your diagram. So say for example, for name if I, so I, I put it right align. In fact, the title for a use case diagram as is the convention is written on the top right. So I have just utilized the paragraph group and have just utilized the home ribbon. Then the insert ribbon. Insert tab or insert ribbon has provision to insert a blank page, picture, clip art, chart, cat drawing, container, call out, hyperlink, screen tip, object, field or symbol. It has ribbon groups named pages, illustrations, diagrams, links to text, etc. So you can see here pages, illustrations, diagram parts, links, text. Design ribbon. Through design ribbon, you can change the page orientation. So what is the page orientation? Page orientation in a typical Microsoft Office software is of two types, the landscape and the portrait. So this is what you see here is the portrait type orientation. And this is the, I change the orientation to Let's say so so this is how the background has changed in your orientation we will just so you can see here this is the 
landscape orientation and I change it to portrait. Now this is the portrait orientation. So you can change the orientation of your visio page. And then you can resize your page. So several you can see several standard sizes are available letter, legal, A4. So whichever size you would wish to choose you can choose here and you can even choose a custom size. You can set up your backgrounds. So say I change the background to this one. You can put a border and title. So all this is taken care by the design tab. Then comes the data tab. Through data tab you can add data to your shapes. You can add data graphics and you can insert legends. Then we will learn shortly when we will learn more about with your shapes about the shape data window. With your shapes can contain good amount of data. This is what differentiates Visio with other diagramming tools where they do not have the equally rich capability of managing and holding data in their shapes. So this is all about the data ribbon. So data ribbon we have covered. Next comes the review ribbon. Through review ribbon you can review your Visio drawing. You can utilize, check the spellings, you can do some search and research, you can use thesaurus, you can translate your Visio page and you can even translate the languages. You can add a new comment and also through review ribbon you can use ink and marker tools. So then comes the view ribbon. How you view the video page can be managed in the view ribbon. So let's have a look at the view ribbon in the video drawing itself. So through the view ribbon I can change it to the presentation mode. So I have changed my drawing to the presentation mode. And to come back from presentation mode to the usual mode I can basically press the escape button. So this is the functionality for the view ribbon. Then we have page breaks, rulers, guilds, guides, etc. Then there is a developer ribbon. Developer ribbon has groups like code, add-ins, controls, shape design, stencil. So you can create even a new stencil in Visio. And stencil as I have told you earlier is a collection of master shapes. So on a Visio there is a collection of shapes which we call as master shapes and what you drop here on the drawing is the instance of that master shape. So, so a master shape and its instance. So what you see on the stencil is the master shape. Add-ins are basically some external programs which Visio allows it to link to itself. So say for example in Visio 2010 there was a very popular add-in for business process model and notation. Now that add-in is not required because Visio has already added its um, added the BPM and facility in its main software. Then there is something what we call as the contextual tabs in Visio. Contextual tabs become available on certain conditions. In this example we will show you a contextual tab and also the usage of ink tools in Visio. So I will show this here. So on the review tab we can click on the new ink tools. Moment we click on the new ink tools uh, another additional tab will come up which is the to tab for ink tools. This is what we call as the contextual tab. So let's see it here on the drawing page. In the review tab, I click on the ink tool. 
So moment I click on the ink tool, I get this ballpoint pen, highlighter, stroke eraser, pointer tool, color, weight, etc. This is what we call as the contextual tab. So say for example, I can use the highlighter on my drawing. So, so just highlighting it here. So it may not be may not look very relevant so I've just highlighted a particular area by using highlighter. I can utilize the eraser to erase it then I can use the ballpoint pen. So ballpoint pen can be used for annotation so say for example when I am taking a lecture if I want to highlight something so I can just as I take the lecture I can just annotate it and this is what we call as the contextual tab. So file types we will cover in the next session. Let us learn how to create a new stencil in Microsoft Visio. In Microsoft Visio we can create a new stencil. Let us say we prepare our Visio diagrams and we are using certain shapes which are to be grouped together. So a new stencil, a stencil file in Visio has got a separate extension. So we need to store the file in that extension for, for 2010. The Visio stencils come with .vss extension. And you can, if we save it in dot v, with an extension vss, dot vss, it comes as a stencil file. So let's learn how to create a new stencil in Microsoft with you. So you can see here, these are the instructions. We will click on more shapes, click on new stencil, and we will do it here right away. So we click on more shapes. We click on new stencil. Let us say we want to create a new stencil in US units. So what I am doing, whatever shapes I will drop here on the right will get to my stencil. So say for example, I drop some master shapes like let's say use case, actor, I add some arrow shapes also on my stencil. I will add some, let's say, flow charting, BPM and basic shapes. This is the share point work. So let's add some of these. So now what I need to do is basically save this file as a Visio stencil file. So I do and I save it as a Visio stencil file. I will save it on my desktop and you can see in Visio 2013 a Visio drawing file has got the extension .vsdx and a Visio stencil file has got the extension .vssx. So I will save it as a Visio stencil file. Then this stencil will be available to me to be utilized for other diagrams and you can see here I can save my Visio drawing as a drawing file, as a stencil file, as a template file and then there are so many other options including a PDF file, a JPG file, uh, an XPS document, a PNG file etc. So I save it as a stencil file and I write it, save it as test stencil.
so now what I need to do I need to close this instance and I need to open another Bizio instance in which I will open my stencil I start Visio 2013 again Let's say open a basic diagram. Then I click on stencils. In more shapes, I go there and I click on open stencil. In open stencil, then I go to my desktop. where I click on test stencil this is what I have created right now I click it here so you will see the test stencil is ready with the with your shapes which I have chosen for that stencil so here very quickly you have learned to create your own stencil in Microsoft Visio let's get back Sometimes some people may find that some of the ribbons are not available to you more so the developer ribbon is not to be seen so you see on my instance you can see you can see the developer ribbon however whether or not the developer view is to be shown on a video drawing is controlled in the backstage view in the backstage view you go to file and then you go to options in options you can customize the backstage view so you have to click on advanced and on advanced you can go below and you can see run in developer mode is clicked if I uncheck it here then it means that the developer ribbon will not be seen so let's do it and let's see so you can see here the developer ribbon is now not to be seen so just in case you do not find developer ribbon on your video presentation with your file you can make it viewable or make it hidden through this so friends here I will again stop for a minute and I will see if you have any questions yeah please if you have any questions you are welcome to ask so, uh, uh, this stencils what we have done uh, every time we have to do uh, do a new stencil so it is once it is done that is been saved in Visio and then we can use it uh, on the next time whatever it you, comes. See, you see uh, this directory we can prepare it at once and then we can keep it like that then you can reuse it so you see just in yeah. case you need to prepare a new stencil you can prepare it and reuse it whenever you wish to use that you can even modify it however for most of the Visio users you will not need to create a stencil because Microsoft Visio is such a powerful software that it has basically organized its stencils very intelligently and you can also utilize let's say if you want utilize one or two additional shapes you can utilize it by dragging and dropping that shape yeah. for that diagram yes I mean, this this is useful for uh, uh, see if I'm planning to do something we just keep everything ready and just drag and drop that for that this stencil can be used otherwise we can go and find a shape and uh, drag and drop again yeah. normally you see you will be <laughs> preparing a diagram of a given type so let's say if you are preparing a use case diagram you won't need 
other shapes. Yes. So, and anything else which you would like to ask? Nothing. So, we proceed with our lecture. So, when we start a visual drawing, it asks for the unit in which you would like to create the visual drawing. So there are two choices which you can make, <laughs> the metric units and the US units. So, whichever scale you, you would like to prepare your drawing, you can use that unit. Then comes the section 2, which is Microsoft Visio Shapes. I have told you it is the Visio Shapes that make up the Visio Drawing. Visio Shapes make up the Visio Drawing. Visio Shapes are ready-made images with which you can make up your diagram. A Visio Shape can be as simple as a line, example, a connector, or it can even be a complex shape like a calendar. Shapes behave in two manners, one-dimensional manner, and a two-dimensional manner. One-dimensional shape behaves like a line. Two-dimensional shape behaves like a rectangle. I will also share with you the method through which you can identify whether a given shape is a one-dimensional shape or a two-dimensional shape. So don't go up by its appearance or by its dimension as you see it on the screen. You, there is a certain method through which you can check whether the shape is one-dimensional or two-dimensional. And as I have told you, relevant with your shapes can be utilized from the stencils by dragging and dropping the instance of that shape. So what you drop on the diagram or on the visual page is the instance of the shape. What remains in the stencil is the master shape. Shapes also hold important information and data. And you can also make your own shapes and shapes have interactive behavior. Let's learn a little more about shapes. As I have told you, Visio shapes are of two types, one-dimensional and two-dimensional. Each type of shape behaves in a certain way. Once you know which type the shape belongs to, you will be able to work with it successfully. There are certain common actions with both one-dimensional and two-dimensional shapes. Say, for example, you can resize them. You can rotate them, you can move them around, you can format them and so on. But how the shape behaves will depend on whether it is one dimensional or two dimensional when you do all these actions to it. So let's learn how to differentiate between a one dimensional and a two dimensional shape. One, every one dimensional shape has got a begin and an end point. Two-dimensional shapes have got eight connection points. So you can see here, at least eight. So you can see here, this is what you see E is a two-dimensional shape because it has got eight points marked as green, which are these ones. This is what we call as a two-dimensional shape. The shape D marked here is a one-dimensional shape because it has got less than eight connection points. When we drag a one-dimensional shape, the outline is a line. When we drag a two-dimensional shape, the outline is a rectangle. 2D shapes are rotated through rotation handle. We will learn it very shortly. One-dimensional shapes are rotated through their endpoints. We can even convert a one-dimensional shape to a two-dimensional shape and also vice versa. There are certain common actions in Microsoft Visio, irrespective whether this shape is a one-dimensional shape or a two-dimensional shape. So these common actions are rotating a shape, flipping a shape horizontally, flipping a shape vertically, grouping and ungrouping several shapes together, nudge a shape, resize a shape, format a shape, managing and viewing shape data, Preventing and protecting shape sheets. Zoom and pan a shape. Connecting several shapes together. Let's learn about it. Rotating shapes. So select the shape and you can rotate the shape 90 degree to the left 
by using control plus L. We will just plan this in on our Visio screen. So we will do it now. So say we click on Visio. We we will add a new page. On the new page, let's open a flowchart. I do new in the categories I go to categories open the flow chart category I am choosing the metric units in India metric units are used so you see flow charting stencil is opening up so you can see here I click on the basic flow chart. So now let's learn basic shape actions. So I drag and drop this shape on the drawing. So let us say we drag and drop this. You can see the left top area has got a cut. If I do control plus L, so this shape has got rotated 90 degree to the left. So that is one of the shape action. Second action is to rotate 90 <laughs> degree to the right clockwise. Control plus R. Let's do control plus R. So the shape got rotated 90 degree to the right clockwise then this is the rotating a shape so I am rotating this shape through the rotation handle so this common shape action is called rotating a shape flipping shapes so to flip shape vertically control plus J to ship flip shape horizontally control plus H. So I will do control plus J to ship so I will do control plus J to ship flip shape vertically. Again, control plus J, the shape will get flipped vertically and control plus H to flip shape horizontally. So this is the common, common shape action. Flipping a shape. Moving ahead from here. Then grouping and ungrouping shapes. We can group several shapes together by shift plus control plus G. So this is like this. When you make a group of a shape, I am dropping several shapes just like now. So I'm, I'm doing it now and then what I can do, I can just select all these sh shapes and I do a shift plus control plus G and now all my shapes are grouped together. So that means I can resize them together, I can move the shapes together. So this is flipping the shapes or grouping the shapes and if you want to ungroup the shapes, you need to do as what you can see here. Shift plus control plus U. Let's do a shift plus control plus U. So now all the shapes are ungrouped. So 
so this is ungrouping a shape so these are the common shape actions which we have learned then nudging a shape you can nudge a shape sometimes to align your visio diagram you need to nudge a shape so this is nudging a shape nudging to the right by using the right arrow nudging top by using the top arrow nudging to the left by using the left arrow and nudging down so for good shape alignment on a drawing we at times we nudge a shape then we can also format shapes so shape formatting is same as we format shapes in powerpoint or in word so we can format text in the shape we can format line of a shape we can put new fill to a shape we can apply shadow to a shape we can apply theme to a shape and this is how you do the formatting and shape formatting can be done by selecting the shape and then selecting format shape here now i can change the shape fill so i change this shape fill to from blue to yellow i can change the shadow reflection and all these things for a shape so this is where you can do shape formatting you can even rotate a shape exactly with some precision you can provide soft edges to the shape and this is how these so these are common formatting tasks so you can view shape data size and position we will now we will be covering these elements of the shape in the next lecture so this is all what will be covered in this session or in this lecture and the coming lectures will cover more on video shapes and other areas of activity so thank you for attending this session and please watch the following video for the other parts of the session so i will open this for 